Hello and welcome to Gonna Do. In this video I am going to go back to what I originally used to do before when I started this YouTube channel and that was do gear reviews. Today I'm going to do a review on the Rhino Rack Batwing or 270 degree awning. As um, I have said before I had a King's 270 degree awning on this and I was happy with it but I have a caravan as well that I use with um, the family and decided to put that on the um, caravan because it has a rear opening door and the, the awning went out over the back of it. So it was just perfect. So I've upgraded to the Rhino Rack for the um, camper trailer and um, I've had it out once. It's very good. There is a couple of things that I want to point out to people, um, but overall I am very happy with it. So I'll get it unzipped and we'll, I'll point out a couple of things. Okay, now that I've got it unzipped, I'll just show you the couple things that um, are a little bit annoying. I wouldn't say annoying, but you just got to be careful with them. They are a good idea, but um, sometimes they don't work properly. So these things here are your arms that swing out, all four of them, and they're held in there with a, a magnetic base. Well, sometimes that doesn't work properly, especially if you've got material jammed behind it. So you've just got to be careful when you're putting it back in that nothing is jammed behind it. Otherwise, the magnet is just not strong enough to hold it. It's only happened once or twice, but it is a bit annoying. The other thing is, down the end down here, this here is your guy ropes and your tent peg bag. So they put all that in there, and it is a good idea. But I'm going to show you later on why it, it can be a bit annoying if you do it wrong so once this is folded out you cannot get to those ropes and pegs i can on this camper trailer because i can get up behind here and get to it but if you had a roof rack on your um if it was on your roof rack of your four wheel drive and you forget to take that out now then they're going to be stuck up there and you're going to have to get onto your roof rack or fold your awning up. So it is, yeah, it is a little bit annoying, but like I said, it's not a deal breaker. You just got to go through a proper sequence when you do it. So the first thing you do, of course, when you've got everything out is take everything out of there. That's it. It's empty now. Now you can um, put it up and it's out of the road and you don't have a problem. The other thing is when you fold it up, it will get folded up in the in the arms. So you've got to make sure that when you're folding it up, you make sure that bag is out. You can only put the tent pegs and the guy ropes back in once it's in this folded position. Okay, now I'm going to undo the straps and fold out the awning. As you can see, the awning is actually self-supporting. I can let go of them. But I wouldn't want to try it too much because they are a plastic joint and they may fail. So I just keep a little bit of tension on that while I'm folding it out.
and there we go it's um quite quick and simple to um put up um like i said it's uh got those self-supporting knuckles or joints as you want to call them but they are plastic you do get two given to you with the uh, awning if you break one i have seen a guy do a video review in uh, america and he broke his on the first time he put it out so um like i said i, I wouldn't put too much weight on them or rely on it if it's windy which it isn't today um, i'd really be careful about how you treat them because i reckon they would snap quite easily so um yeah i just got to put a few guy ropes down and um, we're ready to go again it's good quality really quite quite thick canvas um, the poles are sturdy just remember that these joints up here are plastic there's a little guy rope holder there i personally don't use guy rope through that i'd rather wrap my guy rope through this one here because when you do that the water will run off the awning um like i said very happy with it the other great thing about it is if you don't want to put guy ropes on it and you're not expecting any rain there's a unique feature that you can put the uh, tent peg one through that way and one through the other way and you can nail it down that way um i suppose if there wasn't any wind you wouldn't really need it but you never know wind can pick up quite quickly if, especially if you go away so um look it is really 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 good this here this is what i talk about that 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 black shape up there that's the tent rope not the tent rope the guy rope and the pegs bag so now it's up there so i can get to it but it is quite difficult if you had that on your roof rack you're going to have to get up on it to get them out so that's what i say before you set it up take those pegs and ropes out otherwise you're stuck so anyway that's my thoughts on the uh, awning um, I am not paid by Rhino Rack um, I bought this out of my own money so they didn't send it to me so it's an honest review I do recommend them um, they have better quality than the Kings one uh, certainly a lot more sturdy and um, like I said the canvas is better and um, now that I've done the review I'll just uh, show you another little thing that I've done that's the solar panel that I have on top of my trailer. So that charges my fridge, not my fridge, my battery when we're driving along. But as you can see here, once I've got the awning up, it's in the shade. And I do have a portable solar panel, but when I am running my slow cooker, it can't keep up with it. So I thought I've got to figure out a way of being able to take that off and put it out in the sun. And get the use out of it so i came up with this solution as you can see it used to be bolted onto the frame there so what i've done is i'll put these toggles in undo them which are a bit tight but not too bad and the solar panel comes off. Oops, hang on. Unplug the Anderson plug. There we go. Solar panel's off. So now I can sit it out in the sun, connect the lead to that one, connect the lead to that one, and I've got a portable solar panel that I've made out of my fixed solar panel. So it works really well. And like I said, you just plug the Anderson lead in there, which I made up. Got the Anderson plugs off eBay. Cable from JCar. And I just put a aluminium, piece of aluminium, square aluminium on a um, hinge up there. A little bit of Velcro there to hold it in position. Plug the Anderson plug in. And I've got a 160 watt solar panel putting power into my battery uh, I also tomorrow when I uh, run my um, slow cooker I will have the 110 watt flexible solar panel going 
So I have over 200 watts of power going into my battery. So well, hopefully that will be able to run it better than I did before. Well, it's the next morning now, late morning. I've got a lot of sulfur crested cockatoos at the actual campsite where I was supposed to camp. So this is where I got this site. This is the Wartook State Forest, which is just on the top end of the Grampians on the uh, west side. Um, Wiki Camps put me here, and this is where I'm supposed to camp. And it actually is very good campsites, quite secluded, uh, not very well used, which is, as you know from my channel, this is what I like being out by myself but um, I didn't come camp down here for a reason which I'm going to show you uh, in a few minutes when I walk back to where I'm camped this campsite in particular would be lovely on a hot summer day um, yeah very secluded my camper trailer would fit in there nicely uh, plenty of firewood around here too, so I'm um, still able to light fires. That's the track in. So, love it. So there's a, uh, a swamp out there. Um, this particular area is the low part of this particular spot that I'm supposed to camp. And that's the reason why I am camped. Oh, you probably can't see it but just in there on the other side up on the higher ground up there and the reason I'm camped up there is because later this afternoon or this evening there's a lot of rain coming I have don't have a two a four wheel drive so I was a bit concerned that I was going to get caught in here and this is the reason why I decided to camp where I am because this is the only track in here. Um, I could probably go to the side, either side, but oh, it's a bit spongy out there. Um, yeah, and that water there, I would think my two wheel drive would get bogged quite easily. Uh, and then I could be stuck there. And like I said, this afternoon, um, the rain I've seen on the radar, I'll take a picture of it afterwards and put it up. Coming through Adelaide at the moment, uh, it's heading straight for us. So um, you just imagine this being the low-lying area and where I'm camped is higher up. Uh, the water's all going to run down here. This could be two or three times the size of this by the time I wanted to come out tomorrow morning. So um, I moved up higher. So this is the track that uh, I would have had to take in. As you can see, it's starting to turn into a lot more sandy soil, which um, it's a bit hard, more hard packed, but a bit of sand on it. It's also uphill, so the water would be running past me down to that big flat area. And um, that would be my problem getting through there with my setup. So as you can see, there's my campsite in there, nice and secluded. The road, the main road, Brimpain, Laharam Road is just off behind those trees, but no one can see that I'm in here. So um, it is really nice. So I'll be coming back here again, definitely. Not many people use it. Plenty of firewood and um, just a very nice picturesque spot. Also very close to the Grampians. So if you wanted to um, go in there and do some sightseeing, you could also do that. Okay, I'm now back at my campsite. Take it easy for the rest of the day. Going to get farmhouse chicken casserole. 
going in the slow cooker today. Um, I actually didn't think I was going to be able to get my slow cooker going today because it was very cloudy this morning. I just haven't got enough power coming into my battery if I can't get solar. But um, it's coming out quite sunny now, so um, I'll give it a go. Uh, worst comes to worst, if I lose the sun and I start dropping back in power, I can always put the uh, insert from the crock pot or the slow cooker onto my um, pot belly stove and finish it off that way. So anyway, I'll um, chop up some vegetables and we'll get it going. And there we are, we've got some um, chicken cutlets. So I'll just put some of them on the bottom here. I don't know whether I'll do them all. Let's see how we go. Yep. All in there. Got all my vegetables here. Onion, carrot and potato. Just Fill that up nicely. And there we go. We'll get it cooking and um, see what happens with the sun. See whether I get it done in the slow cooker or whether I've got to put it onto the um, little pot belly. So, anyway. And there we go. All up and running cooking on low so what have we got now we've got 20 to 12 so hopefully about six seven o'clock tonight i should have chicken casserole and that's all for this episode thanks for watching and if you like these videos then subscribe to my channel i will leave you with some drone footage of the grampians and surrounding countryside Thank mm -hmm. you.